In the last video, I said how these are the only regular 3D dice that could possibly be constructed, aka the five platonic solids. And again, I'm just using the term dice for familiarity. Really, we're trying to prove there are only five 3D polyhedra, such that one, every face is the same regular polygon, every corner has the same number of faces touching it, and it's convex, so it can't look like this or anything. So the rhombic dodecahedron, for example, could be a fair die, but as we can see, three faces meet at this corner, while four meet at this one. So it doesn't satisfy the conditions as listed, which is really what we're going off of. But now the question is, why can't we make anything except these five? Well, there are two main ways to show this. One is the geometric explanation, which is more common as, for example, Numberphile and Vsauce Michael have shown it. But there's also a more advanced topological proof, which I'll show as well. Now for the geometric explanation, note that we can construct any of these 3D shapes by taking two-dimensional polygons and folding them up along certain edges. We're also only concerned with regular polygons that have identical sides and angles, so we might as well start with equilateral triangles. If we attach three as shown here, there's a full 180 degree gap which gives us the room to fold the shapes up and thus form most of the tetrahedron, the first platonic solid. This shape has four faces total, and at each vertex or corner, three of the faces meet. If we flatten the shapes again, we see that point, which is common to all three triangles. But we can now add another triangle so that four of them meet at that vertex. Since there's still a 120 degree gap, we can fold these up, which gives us part of the octahedron, the next platonic solid. And we can also go to five triangles, still leaving us a 60 degree gap, which lets us fold these up to create the beginning of the icosahedron, the third platonic solid, which is also the last one with triangles as faces. The reason for that is if we add another triangle, there's no longer a gap. The angles take up a full 360 degrees, and thus we can't fold anything up. If we tried, the shapes would just start overlapping each other. See, that's basically the main point of the geometric intuition here. If we look at any polyhedron, the internal angles that meet at any corner must sum to something less than 360 degrees, like we see here. If they added to 360, that would just correspond to a flat surface that can't be folded. And anything more than 360 would of course involve overlap, which can't happen. So the triangles are done and we move to squares. Note that we have to start with three of any of these shapes, as we can't make a 3D shape with just two polygons meeting at each vertex. We fold these squares up and of course get the cube. If we go back and try to add another square, there's no longer a gap and we can't make a new surface. We'll then move to pentagons and start with three meeting at a vertex, which barely leaves a gap of 36 degrees. But that is enough to fold the pentagons up and get the basis for the dodecahedron, the last platonic solid. There are no more possible shapes because we can't connect another pentagon, obviously, since there's no room and the angles would add to more than 360. Then if we try to go to hexagons and connect three to a vertex, we have no gap, so no room to fold it into the polyhedron. And then if we try octagons, let's say, there's just no way you can connect three to a vertex or anything more because the angles will add to more than 360. So now you should not only be able to see why only five platonic solids are possible, but also why a shape like this can exist. I mean, this has hexagons and even octagons for faces. But if you add the interior angles at any vertex, you get 345, just under 360. So it's the squares that made this thing possible and kept the angle summation just low enough. Okay, so that's the geometric explanation, but now let's see the more advanced topological proof. And while this is tougher to follow, you don't need to know any advanced math for it. Now, in the last video, I said that Euler's characteristic for a 3D shape is determined by calculating the vertices minus edges plus faces. And as we saw, that value for all the platonic solids comes out to two. But it turns out that no matter what convex polyhedron you have, regular or not, Euler's characteristic will always be two. This is the one thing I won't prove, but three blue, one brown has a really cool explanation that I'll link below. So for now, at least just take my word for it. But let's first look at a cube. You'll notice it has 12 edges, four on top, four in the middle, and four on the bottom. But if we split it into its square faces, there are now 24 edges total, or the six faces times the four edges on each. You'll notice this also equals twice the number of edges on the original cube. We've doubled that value by splitting everything up. And that's because, for example, right here there are two edges, but when we bring them together, it becomes one, which is half of two. And since this happens everywhere, when we go back to the connected cube, it will have the total number of edges. 
Let's put this in general terms though, with the number of faces a polyhedron has, or six for the cube's case, multiplied by the edges per face, or four for a square, equals twice the number of edges that are on the actual connected polyhedron. So I really just wrote the equation above in more general terms. Then another thing to note is that on the connected cube, there are eight corners or vertices, each of which has three edges touching them. If we multiply eight by three, we again get 24 or twice the number of edges. And that's because for any vertex, we can count one, two, three edges touching it. But if we count the three edges on another vertex, we have now double counted an edge. So again, we get that double counting just like before, which is why the multiplication comes out to the number of edges times two. But like before, we're gonna put this in general terms by writing the number of vertices, or eight for the cube, times the edges touching each vertex, which was three for the cube, equals twice the total number of edges. Now both of these equations apply to any of the platonic solids. I'm just using the cube as a visual. So with these properties, we can now prove there are five platonic solids. Let's first put Euler's formula on the screen and set it equal to two for our convex polyhedra. Next, I'm just going to put E on the other side. Then I'm gonna solve for F in that first equation, which would give us two E over little e sub F. And then I'll solve the other equation for V, which would yield two E over little e sub V. I can then plug those into Euler's formula for V and F, which gives this expression. If we divide both sides by two E, we get one over the edges per face, plus one over the edges touching each vertex, equals one half plus one over the total number of edges. Now the total number of edges of course has to be positive, which means that this left side of the equation must be greater than one half. Then remember, EF is the number of edges on each face, so like for triangles that'd be three. But we can't go any lower than three or else we wouldn't have a two-dimensional shape for a face. Then E sub V is the edges touching each vertex, so like for a tetrahedron, a vertex has three edges touching it. But again, this can't be any lower. So EF and EV must both be greater than or equal to three. And thus the only integers that will satisfy these inequalities are three and three, four and three, three and four, five and three, and three and five. These five pairs of values each correspond to one of the five platonic solids. And if you were to try anything else, like a shape with hexagonal faces, where EF equals six, then even if EV is three, it's minimum, and we add the reciprocals as shown here, the sum equals one half, which of course isn't greater than one half as required. So numerically, it's just shy of what's needed to create a six platonic solid in three dimensions. So hopefully that cleared things up. I'll have a regular video coming out soon. For anyone new to the channel, you can find social media links down below, and I'll see you all next time.